Netanyahu didn't get any traction at the UN this time around. Indeed, his bomb chart has become an object of ridicule in the alternative media. By now, he is throwing a huge tantrum. He wants his war. And Netanyahu is a man used to always getting what he wants. There are only three things Netanyahu can do now to get the war with Iran going before the Israeli elections next month. The first is to simply go ahead and attack Iran, expecting that the United States will protect Israel from the counterattack, even if Israel struck the first blow. The second option is a false flag attack somewhere in the world to be blamed on Iran. But this is a very chancy option given the video of why Mia lobbyist Clawson actually selling the idea that a false flag to start the war with Iran is a great idea. The third and final option relates to the sudden flurry of media stories and statements by people like Joseph Lieberman about how Iranian hackers are attacking the US financial system computers. Senator Lieberman has also been pressurizing Obama to sign an executive order to take over the internet. Of course, the common sense approach still applies. Why would Iran, which wishes to avoid a war, do something that is provocative? But we know that the US and Israel are behind the cyber weapons like Stuxnet, Duku, Flame, etc. That these cyber weapons were directed against Iran and that one variant specifically targeted banks in Lebanon and Iran. We also know that the US financial system is stretched to the breaking point and we know that if the government of either Greece or Spain is driven from office by angry protests, credit default swaps sold by Wall Street against these debts come due and there is no money to pay the claims. The euro might even collapse and that would trigger even more credit default swaps. So the final option, one that strikes me as very likely, is that Israel will take down the US financial computers and blame it on Iran. This also gets Wall Street and Washington DC off the hook because now the financial meltdown is an act of war rather than the result of decades of Wall Street crime and corruption and the predations of private central banks. US banks have already been hit with cyber attacks over the last two weeks to set the stage. And this would also explain why the US corporate media has paid scant attention to the riots in Spain and Greece so that the Americans still dependent on ABC, NBC, BBC, CBS will remain oblivious to the fact that the euro is falling apart. This scenario also explains the testing of means to interfere with DNS to silence websites that may offer opposing interpretations of events. This too will be blamed on Iran. Since a cyber false flag also gives the US government the excuse to take total control of the internet so that these pesky truth-seeking bloggers don't give the slaves uppity ideas that this is just another war-starting hoax like the attack on the USS Liberty or 911. Between the possibility of a false flag hack attack or the collapse of the Eurozone or just the continuing fraud by the US financial system, you should only have as much money in the banks as is needed to cover your outstanding obligations and you should have the rest of your money and your own personal control in case those bank doors do not open and the ATMs stop working. Please repost this theory to your social networks if we can make them doubt that the official story of a financial system computer crash will be believed by the public, we can get them to call it off. If the bank computers and alternative media do crash, the US and Israel did it.